Hey guys, it's Hunt for Games, and this, like the mythical unicorn, is a rarely sighted and even more rarely captured hunt for hardware. I absolutely love tech hardware, from consoles to peripherals to PC components, but to be honest, if I talked about them all the time, I'd probably hype myself up too much and end up buying stuff I don't need. So I bury those urges deep down and don't do a hunt for hardware segment until they burst forth like a xenomorph out of my chest cavity. The fuck am I even talking about? Sorry I've been AWOL the last week, I kinda messed up my eyes, so it's super annoying to stare at a computer screen. But Hopefully I'll be back in action soon, and I figure now is a better time than ever to talk about some eye-related stuff, goggles, VR. Let's do this shit. Alright, so fair warning, I've never done a video on VR and I've got a lot to talk about, so this one might run a little bit long. I'll leave in the comments or the description below uh, links to the points of the video you can click to if you're only interested in one headset or the other, or just my final thoughts and opinions. Anyways, you may have seen pre-orders go live earlier this week for the larger PlayStation VR bundle, and they sold out pretty much everywhere. The core unit pre-orders are starting up Tuesday the 29th, but as you're no doubt aware, PlayStation's not the only VR VR option available. So, with some of you, like me, probably debating whether or not to lay down some serious cash on one of these offerings, I thought I'd quick go over what's going on with each of them and weigh the pros and cons. So the big players right now are the PlayStation VR, codenamed Morpheus, the Oculus Rift, and the HTC Vive. I'll also quickly touch on Razer's open source VR at the end, but for reasons I'll go into later, it doesn't really fit the category of finished product. So there's a clear frame of reference on pricing, the PlayStation VR starts at $400, the Oculus at $600, and the Vive at $800 with some slight caveats here and there for each. Quick before getting into this, I should explain that I physically haven't had the opportunity to try any of these headsets. While I'm very passionate about the tech and following its development across all platforms closely, keep in mind that these opinions of mine are based solely upon the information provided in press releases and also various public reactions to each of the VR experiences. We'll start with the PlayStation, because whether due to better promotion, pricing, or widespread nature of its platform, the PS4, it's been very well received by the public pre-launch, and initial pre-orders have sold out pretty much across the board. To get running, you'll need a PlayStation 4, PlayStation camera, and for some games, the PlayStation Move controllers. Remember that caveat I mentioned? The $400 package only comes with the headset, its external processing unit, and earbuds. If you don't already have the PlayStation camera or PlayStation Move controller, which many don't, you'll want the $500 package that provides those. So, quick pro-con list. Pros, it's undeniably the cheapest entry point into VR, even if you're starting from the ground up and have to buy a PS4 as well. Being that it's being developed by Sony itself, it's hard to believe they won't continue to push developers to put out some neat titles that take advantage of the hardware. Although, after the PlayStation Vita, I'm less sure of that than I could have been. Also, all of your existing PS4 games can be played on the headset, although instead of the experience with VR-ready games, they'll instead kind of be displayed on this virtual screen that's kind of hanging out in space. Neat, but I don't really see it being super popular. So, cons then. Overall, the headset quality won't be quite as good. The screen is a lower resolution at a total of 1920 by 1080 pixels. It technically has a higher max refresh rate of 120Hz instead of the 90 of its competitors, but only time will tell how often that's utilized. The camera reading the headset's movements are supposedly quite good, although I further not quite as good as the other options on this list. Finally, the PlayStation Move controllers, while a positive for any who already own them, are fairly old peripherals. I've heard a variety of reports on how well they work in the VR space, from good to not so good, but they were definitely not designed from the ground up for this experience, and long term that could be a big negative for the platform. And finally, you'll definitely want to upgrade those earbuds to something better for a quality VR experience, so tack on the price of some headphones if you don't have a pair already. So next we have the Rift, which has pushed itself as the big name in VR for years. Its initial package went on sale in January and contains the sensor, the headset, an Xbox One controller, and VR Oculus Remote for navigating menus. I believe they are also offering Eve Valkyrie and a new platformer as free included games. This package will run you 600 bucks and does not include the Oculus handheld controllers, which will release later this year for an undisclosed price. To get this running, you'll need a beefy PC though, with required specs listed below in the description. And when I say beefy, I mean seven to nine hundred dollars at least to hit the minimum. Out of all my friends with gaming PCs, I know of two that could right now run the Rift, and they're both sitting pretty much right on the minimum. Shit, I'm only a little bit above the minimum requirements in the graphics department, and I have a YouTube channel devoted to gaming. So let's hit up the pros and cons. Pros, this is definitely one of the nicer headsets, although without trying them both for myself, it would be hard to tell you which looks better between this and the Vive. At a full resolution of 2160 by 1200 p or 1080 by 1200 per eye, it's a much crisper image than that of the PlayStation Morpheus. 
It also has wider viewing angles at 110 degree experience compared to 100. But again, I'm not really sure how this affects the experience without the opportunity to try both. The motion interpretation of the sensor and headset is also some of the best available. From what I've read, better than the PlayStation, although possibly behind the Vive. If at this point you're asking how that's important, the more perfectly the headset's motion is interpreted by your PC, the less chance you have of feeling nauseous during the experience. My short and entirely not medical explanation, your body comes to expect certain movements to produce certain results. The headset has built-in headphones for providing audio, a must for truly immersive VR experience. Also, the Oculus controllers are considered to be quite good and designed from the ground up to improve the VR experience. So cons, <laughs> those controllers I just mentioned won't be out until later this year. Depending on the final price they end up costing, the total cost of the unit may rival that of the HTC Vive. Also, while it's currently said that Oculus is a very strong looking launch lineup, it doesn't have an existing platform like PlayStation or Steam to build upon. Supposedly, it should be able to run games developed for the Vive's platform just fine, although it may be locking down its own platform to prevent the reverse from being true. Ultimately, we won't really know until down the line where developers end up putting their efforts and how cross-platform these games end up being. And it's pricey! I mean, $600 is not chump change, especially if you can buy entire game systems for much less. On top of that, it requires a top-of-the-line PC, pushing the total investment up to the 1500s range if you don't already have one. The Oculus isn't alone in that respect though, so let's take a look at the HTC Vive. So finally we come to the HTC Vive, Valve's offering in the VR goggles situation. This package runs at a toasty $800 and comes with the two required sensors, the headset, its own version of the handheld controllers, earbuds, and a couple of codes for Job Simulator and the Fantastic Contraption. While all three platforms perform very similar functions, there's no denying that Vive is pushing hard for more of a full room VR experience and is capable of monitoring a space of 15 by 15 feet. While this is very cool, I'm not sure I even have a 15 by 15 space for gaming in my apartment and definitely not one totally devoid of furniture. The Vive shares the Rift's resolution and viewing angles, and also has practically identical PC requirements, bringing back those beefy PC needs of the Rift. So where does that leave us on the Procon list? Pros, this headset is being developed and supported by Big Daddy Valve, which means Steam. Steam is practically synonymous with PC gaming these days, and it's hard to picture a better platform as a foundation. On top of that, like the PS4's Morpheus, all of your existing games can be played on a virtual flat screen, regardless of whether or not they're VR ready. Some have also said that due to the Vive's motion capturing sensor tech, it's also the best of the three in terms of one-to-one -one replication of your movement. I can't confirm this myself though obviously, and even if true, I haven't heard it's leagues beyond the rift. Lastly, I have heard that with interchangeable and adjustable inserts, the Vive is easier to customize to the shape of your face and a far superior experience for those with glasses. So, cons. I mean, the obvious one is it's freaking expensive. $800 is ridiculous. And that's only after you've bought a PC capable of running it, which also pushes past the $800 range. Now, ultimately, we won't know how that compares to the total Rift cost with the controllers until their pricing is released. But the Rift still has a cheaper entry point. This next point is subjective to the buyer, but I'm not as excited about the free games being released with the Vive either. Job Simulator and the Fantastic Contraption. I go to work every day. Oh, and of course, Razer's open source VR. I did say that I'd mention it. The reason I'm not comparing it to the other three is because it's being touted as a development tool. It's trying to promote the industry as a whole in the VR space for both developers and consumers. It only costs $300, but it's not really the complete package you've come to expect from the other um, options on this list. I believe it is at 1920 by 1080 resolution with a 60 hertz maximum. It's kind of at that weird price point where it seems too expensive as just like a fun let me see if I like it thing, but also too cheap as far as your final product. All right, so that's the foundation of what we're dealing with. So what are my thoughts? Let me open up with my biggest concern. Games, games, games. It's not a shocker that many games developed for PS4 and the Morpheus probably aren't going to be compatible with Rift or Vive. I mean, PS4 exclusivity is a classic thing, but how about between those two? There's currently only speculation on how much will cross over. They are essentially the same kind of platform. I'd hate to buy a Rift only to find out that in a year most games are only released for the Vive. Now due to the Vive using an open source API, I find it hard to believe that this will happen. But the point is we're not sure whether or not all games developed for one platform will work on the other. For example, Eve Valkyrie, one of the most anticipated VR titles for me, is only on the Morpheus and Oculus Rift right now according to developers. Whether or not it'll stay 
that way, we'll see. But I mean, right now, if I want to play that game, I've got to have either the Rift or the Morpheus. Next is that ultimately, this is the cutting edge of this platform. There are going to be a lot of kinks to work out. I'm still super excited about it in general, but I'm sure we'll see some additional versions of the headsets down the line. Maybe cheaper, maybe more customizable, who knows? Maybe just better. That, and like any new platform, chances are we won't see truly amazing games that take advantage of the hardware for a long time. There might be a few standouts or uniquely fun titles, but the best are probably a ways off. With all of that out of the way, what am I leaning towards? Ultimately, while the PlayStation Morpheus is the weakest of the three options technically, I think it has the greatest chance of success in the long term. It's building on the most widely owned system, the PS4, compared to the previously mentioned expensive PVTs that are required for the Vive or the Rift. This is only good for the industry as a whole. The more PlayStation VR succeeds, the more VR continues to expand, but early on, PlayStation might push their system hard. Plus, if your friend group is like mine, if there's any chance people are going to get involved in VR, it's on that platform. Having said that, Sony has given up on platforms before. I'm looking at you, PlayStation Vita. So Rift has an amazing opening lineup, and I think the best of the free games that comes with it. E-Valkyrie looks awesome, and the benefit of its long-term development, but it's tough to bet against Valve in the long run for game support. My biggest concern with the HTC Vive, though, is that they seem to be pushing for the room experience. The you can move around and do stuff VR. That's great, but I think we still need to take some time in the you're sitting in a chair VR, or you're not moving very much VR. PlayStation Oculus both seem to recognize at their demos so far that this is the best approach. If the greatest titles from Vive are meant to be utilizing large areas, I probably won't be able to partake in them. The Steam Controller is a great example of Valve pushing really hard to make something unique and interesting, but ultimately resulting in something a little different difficult for the consumer to actually use. If I had to buy one tomorrow though, I don't know, probably the Rift. Oculus is 100% devoted wholly and completely to its success, and I think it is the best chance of being able to play all future games. By shipping with an Xbox controller, it shows they're determined to meet the current market halfway. I already have the computer requirements, so that isn't a big deal for me personally, and my biggest supporter of the PS4 would be if my friends went that way, but ultimately, I can't see many of them jumping on this VR bandwagon all that early. I'm still not sure if I'll be getting involved in VR straight away. There are not a lot of games out there that I think will utilize the technology. But it's definitely going to be an interesting year for gaming. Let me know in the comments if you're already committed to one headset or another and whether or not you think VR is going to take off at all. Subscribe if you're into this stuff. I'm kind of excited about the prospect of making videos filmed from a VR experience, but we'll see when that actually happens. Anyways, thanks for watching. I just hope these Oculus controllers aren't like 300 bucks. That would be ridiculous. I've heard they're the best of the three controllers, though. Feeling really good to do all sorts of VR activities, controller stuff.